If you want to learn how to install Emulec 4.6 or greater on the HK1 box, then watch this video. Hey, Gary Cruz with GaryCruz.com here, and I've seen a couple of videos on where you can install Emulec on this inexpensive HK1 box. It has pretty good specs for what it is and relatively inexpensive. So this has the four gigs of RAM X905 X3 chipset in this. So what do you need to get this installed? Well, you'll need a SD card. I've got this relatively inexpensive on Amazon. Check out the links below. I'm going to use this to uh, get this connected to my Mac. I probably don't need that because my Mac has a built-in SD reader. You'll need the Belenor Etcher app. I'm doing this on a Mac, but you can do this also on a PC. And then, of course, you'll need the Emulec software uh, download. And then you need this nifty tool, uh, Q-Tip, hopefully a brand new one. All right, so let's go ahead and start from scratch as if you just got one yourself. Here's the HK1 box. You've got the HK1 box. And inside this box, all we'll need is the adapter. This is a five volt adapter. Keep that in mind because people get that mixed up with the 12 volt adapter. And we have a HDMI cable that we'll use to capture the screen. That's all we need for now. I'm, I'm gonna ignore this remote. Comes with a remote, but we won't need it. Next thing you wanna do is download Emulec. And the version you want is this one, the Emulec Amlogic NG a ARCH64 4.6 generic IMG. And just go ahead and download that. I already have that downloaded. And then you want to also download and install Belenet Etcher. So let's go ahead and uh, get this ready here. I'm gonna go ahead and open my SD card. And I'm gonna go ahead and use the built the included SD card reader. Just plop that right in here. So first I'll go ahead and click flash from file. And that is the one I downloaded. Click on open, no need to extract it. And then I'll select a target. And what I'll do is I'll go ahead and stick this in my card reader. And you'll see that SDXC reader media, it's the same size. So I'll select that and I'll go ahead and click on flash. And yeah, I'm about to race it. Let's go ahead and do it. Yes, I'm sure. Let's put in our nifty password. I guess I don't need this reader, but if you need a USB to SD card reader, this has the micro SD and the SD card. What's nice is that you can use them both at the same time. And I'll have that actually used on my PC as we go through the demonstration on how I, I move games over to it. Okay, while that's downloading, let me go ahead and unwrap this power cord. All right, so after you flash the card, the next thing you wanna do is switch over to your desktop view here, put the card back in, and then we want to get the DTB file. So go to device trees and then look for the SM1905X3 4 gigabyte. So we're gonna copy this and put that over to the root. And so we'll place down the root and then we'll call this DTB.IMG. And we want to say, yes, I'll use .img. That tells the system how to start up. And when that's done, let's go ahead and eject that. Remove the card. Okay. And then stick the card face up into the card reader and make sure it clicks. So let's go in here and then it clicks in there. And the next thing you want to do is go ahead and cut off the end of the Q-tip. So make sure that you have this sticking in here. What I try to use a, an audio cord and it just wasn't long enough to click it. So you have to use something like this to make sure it clicks when you power it on. All right, so we'll plug that in and then I'll switch over to the yellow box here. And then let's power this on while holding this down. 
Okay, now you can let go. And it's going to go through its initialization. Now I got that error before that failed to start debug shell that service. I just ignored it. All right, so one of the things I forgot to do is set the resolution. I think it needs to be set at 1080p 60, and it might have defaulted to another resolution. So let's make sure that it goes to the right, right one. So I'm gonna go over here and reset this. Let me see, if I take the card out, it should boot into. Yeah, so it's in 4K right now. I'm sorry I'm not capturing this because I don't have a 4K capture card for that. So now I'm gonna go ahead and plug in my joystick and let's power this on. And then what we wanna do, let's see if I can zoom in on this. You wanna go over to settings on the bottom here. Let's do, you know, I'm gonna record this. Okay, so card ready. All right, so let's move this over to settings and then over to display then screen resolution let's turn it off auto and then display mode we want to do 1080p 60 and then let's confirm the changes okay and then we can back out of that all right let's plop this back in and then uh, let's turn this off Power back on. Okay, so now I can let go. And it's telling the HK1 box what to do with that DTB file. It'll create the partition, the EE ROMs partition, where that's where we'll put the games. So let's wait for that to complete. It says, please do not reboot or turn off your Emulect device. Hmm. I'm not sure how long I have to wait. Oh, there we go. Oh, it's looking for a time sync. That's a good sign. That's the default boot screen. All right, it looks like it's loaded. I've plugged in an 8-bit Doe controller with a, it's, it's the 8-bit Doe Pro 2. And let's see if it's, uh, let's get that turned on and turn it back on. Okay, hold a button on your device to configure it, okay. Up, down, left, right, start, select, east, down, up, west, left shoulder, right shoulder, left trigger, right trigger, left thumb, right thumb, down, left, right, up, down, left, right, and then this one, I'll just use that one, and then click on, okay. All right, now it works. All right, from here, let's go ahead and shut down the system. And then once that's shut down, I wanna take this SD card and plop it out. And when you put it back in your computer, let's actually use my PC for that because I have Batisera on my other one. All right, what I like about this is that I have Batisera loaded on this little mini PC. And uh, let's go ahead and get that booted. And I'll go ahead and make sure that the right hard disk is selected, which is this one. And then we'll save and exit.
And the reason why I load up uh, Batacera, Batacera is based on Linux, so I can see the Linux partitions. And also I have a bunch of more games on there if I want to copy it from there. I just think Linux is really good at copying over files better than my Mac. So let's go ahead and get into the file partition manager. So on there, I'll click on the F1 key. And then I like to switch the view to EROMs and then switch the view to detailed view. And then I also go to view. Let's go to dual pane, which is F3. And then on the F3 plane, let's say, for example, I wanted to copy over my Atari 2600 games. All right, so I thought I was recording, but the first thing you need to do is take that fresh SD card and I'll have a bunch of directories in there. And one of the directories is called BIOS. It's gonna be empty and you'll have to find your own BIOS files. Uh, just use uh, nifty Google for that. And once you do, you'll get all the BIOS files and that basically tells the Emulec how to emulate the games. And then the next step is to then copy the actual ROM files. Think of them as the virtual cartridges. So for example, if I go to the say NES directory, that's gonna be empty. But I'm gonna go ahead and let it copy over the BIOS files and then I'll copy over the games and then we'll stick it back into the HK1 box, load it up to test it out. So right now it's copying over the BIOS files. So even though it's on a M1 Max Mac, uh, it's still gonna take it's still gonna take a while. And I think it's actually faster on the Batocera Linux copy. It seems to be faster than the Mac copy. All right, so now I'm going to copy over some ROMs from the NES folder. Copy that over to my new SD card. And let that copy over. I'm going to do two sets, the NES and I'll do CPS1. And then I'll do three. I'll do Naomi, CPS1, and NES. And then we'll plug it back into the HK1 box to test it out. Okay, I just finished copying CPS1. Let's go ahead and inject this drive to test it out. We're going to take the SD card, plop it back in the HK1 box. All right, let's test out a game. All right. Well, here's the problem when you copy from a Mac. You see the dot underscore files. Fix that. All right, so I stuck the F the SD card back in my computer. I went to the EEROMs directory and I'm looking for those invisible files. So if I go into CPS1, I press command shift period, you'll see that those invisible files show up, but they don't show up here, which is interesting. All right, I'm going to try it on my mini PC here. And let's go to CPS1 and there they are. Huh. All right, if someone else has a different way of doing this without having to go to Banacera, then definitely put that in the comments below. But in the meantime, I'll just go ahead and do it this way. I'm gonna hold down shift and then click on delete. And yeah, I wanna delete those files and remove all of them. And that's why I was copying my files using the uh, Linux drive because it doesn't put those invisible files that the Macs do. But I realize not everyone does that, so you'll probably have to use the terminal on the Mac and run a command to search those files to delete them. All right, let's go to the NES directory because I know I copied that over. I'll probably gonna have a bunch of those. So let's go to NES. All right, now let's go over to one of my favorite games. Let's go to CP1. And look, all the dot underscore files are gone. Oh, this is an old one. Yeah. Round one. All right, so that concludes setting up the HK1 box with the latest version of Emulec. I just received this this December, so it's the latest uh, version. I didn't go with the other tutorial by loading that app on the Google Play Store because it wasn't connecting. But the, the, the best way of doing it is using the Q-tip trick 
and stick it in, the, in there after you configure your SD card with Emulec. If you found this useful, definitely hit the like button and consider subscribing on the way out. Thanks for watching.